Everyday Aerology Everyday Aerology 10 to determine Everyday Aerology 10 to determine Everyday Aerology 10 to determine Everyday Aerology 10 to Everyday Aerology 10 to determine how fancy I dress during the panini. Hello this long gang, welcome back to my channel. If you've already been here, if not hello, it is absolutely fantastic to have you here. And uh, if you're new, I hope you stay. And by that I mean subscribe, of course. We've just hit 300. This is not not 300k. We just hit 300 people on this channel, which is to me amazing. <laughs> that's a bit, that's a ton of people. Thank you so much. Um, this, this, everyone means something to me because you know the thing as a very very small creator is I don't just see numbers in thousands or something. I see every single one and every single one means a lot to me but enough with our sentimentalities so if you happen to follow me on the clock overload app or on instagram you might already know these snippets i showed you in the very very beginning of this video i have been doing this thing where i do roll a d10 that is for the non pen and paper role playing uh, ill care, that's a 10 sided die, and that determines how I dress every day, almost every day. It's basically a sliding scale, it just indicates a certain level of fanciness. Somewhere between staying in my pajamas. If I don't have to go out, if I have to go out, I probably just, you know, throw on my equivalent of a pair of um, sweatpants. I do not own sweatpants, but I do own leggings. And a full-blown ball gown with everything. Now, how did that come to pass and why am I making this video if it's already all on TikTok and or Instagram? Okay, so, story time. I was looking through my wardrobe because I didn't feel like I had anything to wear. This thing here indeed houses most of my clothing. I have a few things that I deem more costumey um, under my bed, like ball gowns and such. Um, and I do have part of my LARP clothing stored elsewhere because you know that's not mine that's my character stuff that's for me that's a difference but yes this this is my wardrobe i have socks over there but that's that i was looking through this because i felt i had nothing to wear nothing that made me happy i mean of course i am clothed that is not the problem but i had nothing that clothed my soul that might sound pretentious, but actually that's how it feels like. That's... That's the issue here. I want things I feel good in. And during the whole pandemonium here, which I think is a very, very, very good alternative term for the pandemic and the other stuff that has been going on, I have mostly resorted to, I think, like two or maybe three pairs of pants including these and uh, my, my punk cupid pants that you already know um, and a bunch of t-shirts or tops and flannels and that's basically it and I missed dressing up and I missed getting fancy and I said as much to my partner who then actually proposed the whole you could you know you could just roll for it and I was like, wait, that's, that's not a bad idea. And it wasn't. It was an actually pretty brilliant idea. Because out of my own intrinsical motivation, I am not necessarily doing this. I need an event. I need to, you know, go out to a cafe or go out to meet with friends or something to dress up, usually. I don't even wear makeup much at home. Except if I'm filming to just, you know, balance out the fact that the camera makes me more of a w body that has been in water for several days. But during the pandemonium, all of these reasons aren't there. I mean, 
it's slowly getting better, but you know what I mean. I mean, there's, there's been one and a half years without any decent reason to dress up. So I need to make my own reasons, and that is hard because, you know, depression and also pandemonium. And my workplace isn't exactly one where I dress up a lot because things get dirty, things get torn. If I wear knits like cardigans on a market stall, it will catch on some hook. And it's, it's very nice, I like that job. Um, but wearing nice cottagecore stuff or something to actually match the ambience is completely out of the question. My personal rules and that is completely arbitrary. You know, that's... you can do whatever you want if you happen to, to want to do this. I know that one friend actually does that. Hi, Bonnie. Um, and I am... I think it's, it's a great tool, actually. Um, I will go more in-depth about all the other stuff. Uh, that you can do with this and uh, that I'm doing with it um, but my personal rules are as follows first roll a d10 1 to 10 I determined that one for me is like basically staying in my pajamas and nine is what I deem the most fancy I can do on this day a workday nine might be a bit different as I just explained from a stay-at-home nine or a uh, going to a fancy ball nine but I might actually wear a ball gown at home but it's still it's, it's, it's still a bit different you'll see that and then I decided that 10 would have the prerequisite of wearing a pair of latex ears or prosthetic pointy teeth or something like that I've had one 10 so far and it was fun and I just, I just wanted a reason to do that too. I actually have absolutely no issues with going to work with a pair of latex pointy ears. I have no problems with that. My boss has no problems with that. So, yeah, I would totally do that if it came up. But why am I making this video? I'm making this video to show you what I can do with these things, why I'm making this. And also, if the Clock Overlord app at some point might shut down or be, you know, banned in Germany for violating a lot of things, um, I like to have these things as a sort of archive. I'm not sure if I'll do this every month or every second month or what. I, I don't know yet. But this is why you get basically a video backup. But I've talked a lot already, and so you know, just let's let's go and look at these outfits. The whole rule for style thing makes me get creative with the things in my wardrobe. I felt angry and sad and disappointed because I didn't like anything in there, because I wasn't wearing anything in there, because you know, the pandemonium and all that. I felt like it was better to throw everything out, but that was mostly my frustration speaking, and the thought of getting rid of everything was equally hurtful to the thought of having the things in the first place. I was repeating the same three outfits every day, and while that might be perfectly fine for some people, I felt deeply dissatisfied with that. Here's the thing. I love, I genuinely love gamification. If I can gamify it, I can do a lot more stuff than by telling myself to do it because it's good for me or because it makes me guilty or it's the adult thing to do or something like that. Positive motivation just helps a lot more than negative and I've seen this very much in effect for me with things like habit apps, learning languages on Duolingo, doing workout apps and even chores. We recently installed a wanted dead or alive system with points here in the HQ and it absolutely works wonders. I usually hate chores, but like this I can totally do them. This challenge helps me to figure out if I'm unhappy with my wardrobe because I don't have any ideas how to style it, if I'm unhappy because I don't wear most of it or if there's actually something lacking there. For example, I already found out that I want more cottagecore compatible things. I threw out most of my Mori K wardrobe a few years ago and that filled a similar gap. 
and that I want to jump onto the whole stays and corsets as daily wear trend really badly and that I desperately need a pair of fitting non blue professional pants. And I also don't have any blush pink antique looking bling and that's just sad. I can assess if things need changing, fixing or simply letting go because I actually wear them for once. The pandemic has been going on for over a year now. Bodies and tastes change within that time and that is perfectly okay. I have a bunch of things that I always thought I just would lose weight for and then I would wear them. But maybe the thing to do is just alter them to fit my body instead of altering my body to fit into them. I can even analyze what my favorite pieces are according to the times I've worn them and see if I maybe want more of those or more of the features that make them my favorites in the first place like texture and material and cut. For example, I really like my high color lace tops that I can wear under other things to Edwardian them up, so to speak, so I might want another one of those. Or that I like a specific cut of pants, good thing I just make a Frankenstein pattern for that. This is a shameless self-plug. Helping me with this is my fashion journal, in which I not always, but at least sometimes, keep record of what I was wearing, what style needs I had that day, and what I felt like I needed to make the outfit of the day better, and also how happy I was with the overall results. When something keeps coming up, like a pair of pastel or otherwise cute trainers in the I need this to make it better category, I'll put it into a more permanent list and keep an eye out for it. I am very much willing to make a whole video about my style journal thing because there's more to it than just this one table, but it would not fit into this video in, in its entirety because it requires a bit more filming from above onto the journal and then I couldn't show you the outfits. But if that interests you, please leave a comment and I will... I will readily make that video. As time goes by, I will hopefully be able to identify my own seasons, as I call them, as well. Styles tend to shift and repeat throughout the seasons for a lot of people, and I know that I gravitate more towards a dark academia influence in autumn, and maybe something witchy, and I at least want a ton of velvet and shabby Dickensian street urchin stuff in winter. But I'm sure I'll be able to differentiate more if I keep this up. Maybe it will help with my wardrobe, maybe it will just help me put things into neat little boxes and label them and make for an interesting personal statistic. I don't know, but I'm keen to find out. But before you think that you will now be able to determine when I film the video by looking at the outfit, I'll tell you that the makeup is the thing you would actually have to look at. Because um, I'm far more inclined to redress and maybe just put on another shirt than to do my makeup again. However, this challenge has led to me experimenting with makeup more, which is really nice because I keep buying the stuff for the lovely colors but never really use it. My accessories also get more fresh air and I've been more motivated to fix certain items. And with all LARPs, you know, being cancelled, my prosthetics that I don't even wear a lot because I currently do not have a character that wears latex ears uh, does not have, you know, it, it's not, the character's not wearing latex ears. I'm wearing the latex ears and the character has non-round ears. Um, but I actually get to wear those. So that's good. And maybe someday I'll actually wake up and think, this is exactly what I feel like wearing today. This is the perfect outfit for this day. This embodies what I feel like today. This clothes my soul. That would be so ideal. But until then, this is a perfect experiment for me. And if you want to join me, the hashtag is roll for style or R4S. And I think it would be so fun if you did. I will keep tabs on, on these hashtags, especially if you're in, in the same funk as me. I think the pandemic has hit differently for alternative fashion out there in the wild. Oh, oh, it's thriving on social media, but all the events we used to find and meet our kin have been cancelled. And sometimes it's hard to be the only alternatively dressed person out there, especially if you live in a small city or an area where it's uncommon to dress in an alternative style. 
For me, this helped tremendously. And funnily, the compliments I got for my outfits outside the internet has only increased. Maybe this helps. Maybe this is a good thing. And so I'm putting it out there. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the attention. And again, thank you for 300 people on this channel. This is, I think this is amazing. It might not be much in the overall scheme of things, but I think that's pretty awesome. I did this. Thank you. Have, have a cup of tea. Have, I don't know. I wish I could offer you a piece of cheese, cheesecake. Not, not the American kind, the actual German, European stuff. That tastes completely different. But maybe some of you are vegans or lactose intolerant so uh, I wish I could offer you something I just offer my sincere thanks I'm so glad that this little community is growing oh my thank you so much for watching um, I'm still looking for for something to say in a sign off that I actually like you're awesome and I I want you to fight that banality out there and be fancy and be weird and be whimsical and sometimes we can't sometimes we don't have the spoons or work uniforms are you know prohibiting a more personal expression of um of style or something like that but if that happens just you know Turn, turn to your fellow weird people and maybe just enthuse with them about these things and I hope I can push a tiny bit of that banality of everyday adult life and everyday modern life away for you with these videos. And with these very sappy and very personal words, I'll leave you alone. I'll see you next time. Thank you again so much for watching. Bye.